Okay, so the first phone that's come out with the new Snapdragon 888 chipset is this guy here, the Xiaomi Mi 11. But because this phone is an exclusive to Asia right now, I'm not gonna focus too much on this particular phone. I'm gonna go through some of the more interesting features, but I wanna focus this video more on the Snapdragon 888 itself, just mostly the features that Qualcomm was talking about, kind of like hyping up during their presentation of the Snapdragon 888, particularly the camera stuff. So yeah, this phone itself, uh, there's two or three things that really jump out at me. Number one, the screen. This is an amazing, like truly amazing screen. It's awesome to see this kind of screen in a $600, $650 phone. 1440p, 120 hertz, very responsive. It's bright, it's colorful, it's a really nice screen. Uh, the other thing that really jumped out at me was the speaker array. So. The Mi phones have always had good speakers, and this is just, it's on another level. Like, it's weird how much better these are than a lot of North American phones. Like, I think one of the big things is they put, like, a speaker aperture cutout at the top frame, so it's just, like, you're just getting a really good audio experience. The other thing is battery life. This is a 4,600 milliamp hour battery. It's not huge, it's big, but because of the Snapdragon 888 and because it's a five nanometer fabrication, I was hopeful that it would be able to deliver a way better battery experience than previous generations of phones. It doesn't, like, it's good. Like this is a six, six and a half hour screen on time for me. It's just that it didn't seem as, it didn't seem significant from previous, you know, seven nanometer chips. So. And this is just the first one. Maybe other Snapdragon 888 equipped phones will be able to deliver something different, but I tested it several times. I'm getting good, but somewhat expected battery life. Now the camera system is a triple camera system. They got a wide and ultra wide and a five megapixel macro. We all love those macros, right? So this is where my interest was kind of focused on on this particular phone. Uh, during the Snapdragon 888 announcement, they mentioned, well, they really focused on camera improvements, right? That was the whole thing this year. They mentioned the inclusion of a new triple ISP, so a triple image signal processing capability where you're basically taking three photos at, at once, right, and combining that data into something that's better and more usable. Now, this camera system technically has three sensors and three lenses, but I don't know if it's taking advantage of all three because there's only two cameras that are of significant value, like that five megapixel macro is probably not amazing, but I just wanted to see what does this new camera technology with Snapdragon 888 deliver, right? Because this is the same sensor we've seen in Xiaomi's phones. So I wanted to see if I could spot the difference between the image processing on the Snapdragon 888 and the previous generation. Some of the photos are really good on the Mi 11, but the difference is not as big as I was hoping it would be. So the main sensor shoots incredibly well, but the ultra wide still lags behind. Like you can tell when it switches over to that ultra wide sensor, there is a significant drop in image quality. But there was one feature I was particularly interested in seeing uh, implemented in these phones. So during the Qualcomm presentation, of Snapdragon 888, they mentioned the capability for phones and phone manufacturers to be able to switch uh, focal lengths fluidly. So on the iPhone, when you switch between like the wide and the ultra wide sensor, there's this kind of stitching of images. So it's a very fluid motion. You'll tap between the two different lenses and it'll smoothly transition between those two lenses as if you're just adjusting a zoom ring on a regular camera lens. There's this smooth and fluid motion. But on most Android phones, that's just not a thing. You wanna switch between your focal lengths, there's like a bit of a stutter between them, right? During the presentation, Qualcomm said that that would be a feature that the new 888 equipped phones would be able to do. This phone can't do it. I don't know if it's like an implementation that uh, Xiaomi hasn't put in yet, but I just expected it and it's not there. The Mi 11 shoots really well in low light conditions, but it didn't feel like a huge step up from 2020 Xiaomi phones. Now there is one feature that didn't exist without the Snapdragon 888. It's the ability to record low light video with AI enhancements. So they're working with I think the company's called Blink AI, but they're tapping in to the Snapdragon 888 and they're able to shoot 
low light video with some significant enhancements. You do lose some detail, right? But you do get a significantly brighter image in that video as well as more accurate colors. Now, this type of feature isn't useful for everybody, right? Not everyone cares about low light video recording, but I do think it's something that the Snapdragon 888 is doing that couldn't be done before. But my overall take on the chip is that it's good, but like there's a part of me that was hopeful of, I guess like more significant improvements. I mean, processing speed and graphical performance isn't that big to me, right? I mean, they're so good already that the year on year improvements in those elements are expected and they seemingly dumped the charging cable and charging brick kind of like Apple did, but they do offer free ones if you want them, at least in Asia right now. But I was hopeful for a much bigger jump in camera, capabilities just through the chipset itself. But at least on this phone, it seemed not as big as I was hoping it to be. But the phone itself, otherwise, it's great. If this is your type of phone, you're probably gonna love it. And the under display heart rate sensor is pretty cool. But the Snapdragon 888, I gotta be honest, there's a part of me that feels like Qualcomm's getting too comfortable at the top without enough competition. And it's easy to get complacent up there. I wanna see competition. I wanna see Google's custom SOC. And more importantly, I wanna see what Samsung brings in a couple days. The Exynos announcement, if you think about it, if you think about what Samsung's doing here, this is the first time they've had an announcement for a chip in a while, right? And it's not just to promote the new S21 and th those new phones, it's to promote the chip because hopefully the new Exynos chip is so good that other companies start using it. They wanna sell these chips to other phone manufacturers. It feels like Qualcomm has a huge foothold in the Android market space with like everyone uses their chip, right? Almost everyone. And to have another player that's competitive and with a huge company like Samsung backing it, excellent chips, I wanna see what they delivered in a few days. Okay, but that's my take on this phone and the Snapdragon 888 so far. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time. I had to rush this ending because the sun is going down. I feel like I'm gonna lose all the light in a moment.